Hey everybody, it's me, Kevin, your teacher, uh, and today we're going to work with Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. He was born in 1928 and grew up in New York City. Um, he describes himself as having a really tough childhood, that he lost a lot of family members uh, to the Holocaust. This made him focus in his books on this question of how do children make it through childhood, make it to adolescence? How do we make it through adolescence? The book was published in 1963, but he started working on it even earlier in 1956, just a little over 10 years removed from World War II. People are really sort of starting to think about uh, why did something as a... a atrocious as the Holocaust. Why did this happen? Maurice Sendak himself, he turned to psychology, this question of how is it that we can master our feelings so that we can come to grips with the reality of the world. I want you to be thinking about how this character, Max, and the, uh, and the wild things as well. How does Maurice Sendak show us their feelings, their emotions? Why do characters act the way they do, the psychological component. What are these uh, characters thinking? What are they feeling? And what are the moments that we could fit into the story circle? At the beginning, we've got the character, the protagonist, a status quo, but something isn't right. They need something. They go and cross this unknown world, this weird new place. They are looking for that thing that they want in part four. They are tested. They have to learn and adapt. They find what they were looking for, but but they pay a price for it. So you return back to that place that you were in part one, but you've changed. This is only a 300 and some word story. It's 10 sentences long, 37 pages, it's short. Despite that, we still can get that entire story circle. What's the psychology of these characters and what are the moments that we could fit into the story circle? Which reminds me that I'm missing a very important part of this. So. But this crown is important. Uh, it's one of the many symbols that show how Max is feeling. One of the things that I notice right away with this book is this very first page. What's the deal with that? It's not a sentence. There's no period. You're expecting there to be another part there, but he doesn't give it to us. The subject is the night. You can kind of think in your head, on the night is another way the sentence could start. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another his mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. So I just put all the words in order and took the pictures out. You have to literally turn the page. But when you see it back to back like that, the sentence makes a lot more sense. But it also shows you this rhythm. You know, maybe it was to make you sort of tear through the pages to get yourself into the headspace of this kid who's causing mischief in his wolf suit. When you're looking at language and you're closely reading it, nothing is too small to notice. Wore his wolf suit. So those W's are repeated there. Pictures of him being mischievous. All right. So he is sent to room without dinner. Our world, um, our ordinary world right here, is Max wearing a costume and making a lot of trouble for his mom. What is it that Max seems to need? Um, how can you tell? I just want us to take a look at these illustrations when Max's room in step three of the story circle is transforming into this forest, into this new place. How would you characterize that face? He's got his nose turned up in a frown. Even his whiskers are sort of pointing down. Not feeling bad for what he did, that he's more upset about being punished. In the next image, how is he feeling when these things are happening around him? Now his room is almost entirely forest. He is becoming more comfortable, it seems, in this environment. And then this last one in the transformation, he is fully in this other world. The other thing that stands out is that we don't see really any human. He's got his back turned to us. He's almost entirely animal at this point in the book. So eventually we see Max on his boat and Maurice Sendak goes out of his way to call it a private boat. Every word matters. Uh, the boat itself is called Max, so it's clearly meant for him. And here's a phrase that I really wanted to highlight for you especially since we've all kind of been stuck at home in and out of weeks and almost a year. To me, uh, that really captures sort of how bizarre and weird it can feel to be in a new situation. Time doesn't really mean the same thing. While he's on the boat, could be weeks, could be almost a year. The time isn't what's important. He's got a dragon chasing him on the next page. This is where the wild things are. Here's our first proof. There's a wild thing right there and kind of highlighting how bizarre and different of a world this is for Max. How does he feel when he first arrives at the 
wild, wild, and wild, wild, the island where the wild things are. This is the beginning of Max's search that he's on. How does Max adapt or change in this new world? He didn't have to go on the boat, but he makes a choice there to go into this new world. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that need. Um, we're starting to see a little bit more of what Max needs, but Maurice Sendak never really comes right out and says it. He is looking for well, at its most obvious, he wants dinner. He's hungry. Maybe is looking for some sort of power, um, some sort of control. He wins the monsters over with a magic trick, blah, blah, blah. Then he is made the king of all the wild things. We know that part of that hero's journey is to find the thing that you're looking for. Max was looking for a crown. Is that what he was looking for before? No, he was looking for more than that. What kind of symbolism of an idea that might be a little bit harder to communicate through writing? Crazy party with the wild things. Wild things look pretty thrilled. Howling at the moon, jumping up and down. They're up to no good, these two wild things. Riding on the wild things back. Maurice Sendak was really, really good at capturing emotions in his drawings of faces. He's got oddly human feet, too. I don't know how I feel about that. Now stop! Max said and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. Just notice that rhythm. Now stop, Max said and sent the wild things off to bed. And we get this idea that Max was lonely. And when we think back to the story circle, almost immediately after Max is made the king of the wild things, he is taking advantage of his crown. He punishes the wild things for really no reason at all. How much of this really had to do with the wild things and how much of this has to do with Max, he gets that control, but he's paying a price for it. He feels like he's not number one when it comes to the wild things, which makes sense. He's a human on an island of wild things. He wants to be where someone uh, loved him best of all. Maybe he does feel like he comes in second place, even though he is their king. Eventually, he smells good things to eat, so he gave up being the king of where the wild things are. This isn't what he wants, and he starts to follow his nose the way back home. It looks like Max is just fine with his decision. He's waving off. The wild things roared their terrible roars, gnashed their terrible teeth, rolled their terrible eyes, and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. All these things are still bad about them, but Max is able to wave goodbye. Uh, and do it feeling differently than he did when he first approached that island. I'm not going to give you this change because I want you to be thinking about how has Max grown from this experience? Um, what are the life lessons that Max might take with him now that he visited that island? He arrives home and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him, and it was still hot. I read that Maurice Sendak was in a giant argument with his publishers over the word hot. Uh, they were concerned that kids reading the book would think that Max would burn his tongue. They wanted him to change it to warm. Uh, and there was a great quote. He says something like, everything about this book is hot. If I were to say that the food was just warm, it would take all the heat out of it. We've got the dinner on the table. Uh, you know, mom even brings it into his room. Look at, there's even a slice of cake, I think. It's the same food from before. But she brought that food up to him, even though she was upset. And his face here at the end, is going to be your visual hint into Max's psychological state. Uh, he's acting out for a reason. Why is he doing that? Does he want more attention, freedom, or control? Does he just want dinner, a shiny crown? He needs something. That's clear. Otherwise, he wouldn't be acting that way at the beginning. That's what I want you to be thinking about. How has Max grown from this experience, and how might that connect to the story's life lesson or theme?